Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial on how to enter outside third-party payroll in QuickBooks Online. I am Kathy Grosskirk with Bookkeeping Clean and Simple and I have to admit that I've been inspired by Seth David with Nerd Enterprises to do this video a few years back. He did a similar process using the desktop platform he actually did it for both the summary direct deposit method and the individual check method. And so once I saw that video or both of those videos and implemented his methods myself and my desktop clients, I was sold to the point where I am just really appreciative of this. And I noticed that there's not really in, or there wasn't anything until now in YouTube or anywhere else to go through this process. So I wanted to do this. So hopefully you'll appreciate that. At any rate, I want to let you know that uh, we are in Craig's Design and Landscaping Services. And before you actually set this up in your own QuickBooks file for your clients, there's a few things that you have to do up front in order to do this. Now let's just make sure that we understand that we're on the same page. This process is for those of you who have clients using payroll from an outside source that's not through QuickBooks or through any integrated third-party apps that you're having to enter this data after the fact using the source documents uh, such as the payroll reports that you get from the third-party provider or the outside provider. So we need to make sure that we are on the same sheet of the page there and if we are then there's a few things you've got to do before you actually get started. First of all, you've got to gather up your payroll reports. And as you can see here, I have the payroll report, the, the detail report for the client as well as the payroll summary for the client. And what we want to make sure that we understand is that when we get these reports, and this report, this company gets paid bi-weekly, which means they get paid every other week. So when we get these reports, and as you can see, I've got these red acted because we have, this is actual live stuff, so we don't not need everybody knowing who these people are. And in this company, we only have three employees. And then this last one, this uh, guy that's getting $4,000 uh, for his uh, gross pay, he is an officer of this company. So we'll talk about that in a little bit when we actually set this up because we've got to track his money separate from everybody else. Once you go down to the bottom, you'll see the company totals. You'll see the regular hours, and if we had any sick leave or vacation or anything like that, that would be listed under here as well. The other thing you want to look at is that you've got your employees' deductions for FICA and Medicare and federal taxes and in your state and then the state where I live is Georgia so Georgia has to take out their income taxes and all that and then we also have an area for reimbursements and then if you look over here this amount right here is our net pay and this is also going to show up on our payroll summary as our direct deposit amount and all these three individuals are receiving their monies through direct deposits. So all these amounts are going to come out, are going to match, or they should match what's coming out or being debited out of your bank account. So it's real important you have those reports to start this because you're going to have to do some setup in the beginning. But once you do the setup in the beginning, it'll make things much, much easier for you. The second thing you need to do is you need to go into your chart of accounts. And when you go into your chart of accounts, you're going to set up some accounts. You're going to set up some payroll liability accounts. Actually, you're going to set up one payroll liability account. Notice how I have the asterisk in front of this. And what this does is to make it easier for us when we're actually doing the setup to find it when we actually do the initial setup. So the only, and, and this is a parent account, and everything else that we put under here is a sub account of this parent account. And so what I did is I created the only sub account for this is employee payroll taxes payable. And you'll see where this comes into play 
like I said, this is the payroll taxes payable that comes out of the employee's uh, paycheck. And then the next thing you've got to do is, um, going down further on the chart of accounts, we got the payroll expenses area that we need to set up. Again, with that same asterisk. And then we have several sub-accounts under here that we need to set up. Uh, again, we have to set up our salary and wages, and then we have a separate line item for officer compensation. And we will talk about that when we actually set up our payroll net pay in just a little bit. We also have to set up, and I also put asterisks up in front of those, so that way they are organized on our list to come uh, as number one and two underneath the payroll expenses main category. Now, if you've got numbering, it might be a little bit different scenario, but if you're not using numbering, then this should work pretty well. As you can see, you also need to set up a category for payroll fees. Those are the invoice, the, the invoiced amount from the payroll company, uh, what you have to pay for them to process the payroll for that, for that uh, term. Then you also have the payroll taxes expense. This is the employer's contribution now. You can name this employer payroll tax expense if you want to. Or again, you're going to, if you need any like detail, you're going to go to those payroll reports. So everything is being entered in aggregate. But yes, yeah, certainly if you wanted to name this employer payroll taxes expense to make that difference. But that's one of the reasons why we only add it here and we don't do the liability up there because there's really no need because once because you're only entering this in once you also need to have a category for reimbursements as you can see if you've got employees being reimbursed through the payroll company for payments that they make on behalf of the business that's not income that they're getting reimbursed back and also your sick vacation and personal if you um, have separate categories for bonus or if you have separate categories for workman's comp those would be underneath those different a lot of items you don't have to put them under payroll because there's some companies that will process like your workman's comp and things like that and and i do have a client that i have that but i'm trying to make this simple so that you guys can follow it so you have to create those categories in your chart of accounts once you do that you're going to also create these three vendors in your vendor center. And notice that I put the asterisks over here under these as well. And, and we'll just go ahead and look at the payroll net pay one real quick so you can see how I set it up. And I did very minimal setup to this. Basically, I put the asterisk in front of there, display name as, print check on as, and that's real important. And then under the notes, I put used to record outside payroll entered manually and I did that with all of all of these so all those that have that saved under there and those are the first three things you see when you open that vendor list when everything is alphabetized because that just brings those things to the top of the list over the regular A B C D or whatever so you've got to set those up so once you do that you're ready to go ahead and set these up as recurring transactions. Now, I've already got the recurring transactions tab open, so we're going to switch over to that real quick. And as you can see, I have those three transactions that we need. We need the uh, payroll taxes remit, we need the payroll net pay, and the payroll fees. I usually start with the payroll net pay first. So if we're setting these up, we would click, initially if we're setting these up, we would click on the plus tab and then go into the check and then set all that up and then make recurring. But since we've already done that, I'm just gonna go ahead and start with the payroll net pay. I'm gonna go ahead and click over here on use. And as you can see, everything has already been set up for this payroll period, which the check date is May the 17th of this year. So as I go through these, I'm gonna go ahead and switch back and forth between the payroll report so here we go and we're going to look at the payroll detail report as you can see and I'll go ahead and make this a little bit bigger so we can see go back down here to the bottom and as you can see our regular hours are seven our, our regular uh, hours the totals for that is seven thousand two hundred thirty eight dollars and forty six cents and like I said this last guy on the end he is an officer so when we actually go ahead and 
fill this out, we need to break his compensation out from that. So subtract that from that total, you get $3,238.46 that you put in the salaries and wages, and then you put the $4,000 for the officer there, which that totals the same thing. Now let's go back to our report again, and I want to look at something else. As we go down here, you can see that we had no sick or anything, and of course if you had sick pay, you would enter that in there, but when you're setting up the template, you want to make sure that you put that in there. Even though it's going to show a zero on here, you want to make sure in the template that it, that it shows on here, so that way all you have to do is if there's anything in there, you plug in the numbers or whatever. So, but for this particular report, we didn't have it. So the next thing we want to do is we want to go over here to our next area, which is reimbursements. And we see we do have $308.20 in reimbursements. So let's go back over here to our recurring transaction. You can see we've already set that up in there. And then the final thing we want to do is that for the employee payroll taxes payable, that's the only liability that we're going to have that we're going to work with, and it's going to be in our net pay. Notice how we entered that negative as a negative number. So we entered it as a negative $11,077.23, which brings our total amount to $63,69.43. And I'm going to show you how on that detail report, that matches everything so this total was entered negative and so our payroll total debit for from our banking account for that direct deposit is 63.69.43 going back to our report and you can see 63.69.43 and I'm going to go ahead and save and close that since I have not done that at this point so like I said Initially, you would set this up, you would make it recurring, and then you would go to the recurring list, which you can actually access through the gear icon. And then you would save and close. And that's been recorded in your um, QuickBooks online file. I did say that it was, yes, under the gear icon, under recurring transactions is how you would get to that page. So we've already done the net pay, and now we want to do the taxes remit. So again, same principle, if you haven't set this up, you would click on the plus icon and then enter it as a check, and then you would and then you would make recurring, and then you would come to the recurring area to enter those in. Once you enter it as a recurring transaction, then you can just change the amounts based on the payroll reports. So let's do this uh, taxes remit. I want you to see this one because it's basically going to uh, make sense to you once you do that. As you can see, and, and now we switch over from the detail report to the summary, okay? So that we're in the summary report now, and I don't really have much that I need to increase on that, but I will a little bit so you can see the numbers a little bit better. All right, and I'll do some scrolling now. So remember that negative number that we put in the net pay? Well, now we have to enter it as a positive number in the check. So if you go here, you see we've got eleven hundred and seventy-seven dollars and twenty-three cents and five fifty-three seventy-four. And those, when we go back to our report here, we've entered those in here. So now this is entered as a um, positive number, and that's going to um, zero out that amount that we put in as negative before. Okay, and then our total payroll uh, tax remit. And again, you're going to use the pay, payroll tax remit. Remember, we created that as a vendor in our vendor center. Use the same payment date. And one thing I forgot to mention, and you want to make sure that in the description and under the memo, too, you go back to the payroll report. And you, and you can do this off of uh, either of these reports, as they both have the same period. Basically, you're just copying this pay period here. And then you're just pasting it in the these areas right here, okay? And then when you enter all that in, and again, you want to make sure the amount here for the payroll taxes remit matches what's on the summary page. So we're going to go down here and look at that. And as you can see, okay, 17397 
and 17.30.97, so all that matches. So um, we're gonna go ahead and save and close that, and that's gonna bring us back to our recurring page. And now the last thing you need to do is to enter the payroll fees. And once you've created that and you've made a recurring transaction, all you have to do is go in the recurring transactions page, click on use, and for the most part, depending on unless you've had an influx of new people or some uh, unique things that are going on in your company that you might might take a, a little additional uh, work to do, then the amount shouldn't change on a regular basis. But you still have to check that out. So let's go here and we're going to look at that. So I'm going to scroll down and as you can see, our invoice here is showing 5440. If I scroll down a little bit more, you can see that these are the amounts that are going to be debited from our account. So 5440, go back to our transaction here. We have the date. We copied and pasted in the description here and in the memo. The amount matches what's on the statement. So we're going to go ahead and save and close that. So all of that has been entered in there now. If you go back up to your search and click on that, then it'll show you that those are the most recent transactions that were put in there, which is what we want to see. We want to make sure that those are in there. A lot more simpler than using a general journal entry, a lot more intuitive. Um, if you're entering individual checks, you would, um, a combination of individual checks and all that, it'll show it on the payroll report, so it shouldn't really mess you up. Any other deductions you have to make, you have to make sure you add those categories. But otherwise, I think it's pretty simple and straightforward process to do this. So hopefully this has helped you out. And so I just hope you guys got a lot out of this. And that's it for this tutorial. And again, I want to thank Seth David for providing me the inspiration to do this for QuickBooks Online. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and let me know if you have any other topics you want me to do. I appreciate your time and attention and y'all have a wonderful day. Take care, everybody.